Hello and welcome everybody to our driver's eye tour. Good afternoon. This is Gareth. Say hello Gareth. We should get on the tram because we're about to go. You need to give me a little bit more lead. You've got enough. <laughs> it's a lovely day to do this actually. We were going to do it a couple of weeks ago but it, um, well it tipped down didn't it Gareth? Yes. It was slightly wet. I would say. It was slightly wet. Absolutely. So uh, what we're going to do today is take you from Seaton Station, which is where we are now, on number 19, the last surviving Exeter tram, all the way up to Colleton and back again. And on the way, we'll give you some facts and figures all about the tramway. And if you want to ask any questions to uh, myself or Gareth, mainly Gareth, then uh, please do so. Say hello in the chat, say where you're watching from, and um, we'll get going. So when was the last time you drove, Gareth? Hey? When was the last time you drove? Uh, Saturday. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, so what are we doing now? We're going to start the system now. So that, oh, uh, you're going to go out the skinny wave, right, okay. To, uh, to come in. Just give it 15 time go around. So we get a white right section now and proceed up to... The depot. Oh, lovely. Or should I say, Riverside Hall. Oh, fantastic. Why would you choose to go through the skinny way? <laughs> oh, I see. Fair enough. Okay. So we got the white light. And we're off. And we are off. On our way to Colleton. Uh, so this is the first section, or the first uh, loop section. How long does it take to get between Seaton and Riverside? Typically, four, four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. It certainly does. Just going through the uh, section breaker. Uh, hello, Andrea. Hello, Simon. Hello, Teresa. Uh, Simon asks, um, has Josh dusted off his ABBA outfit? Uh, not this year. I'm taking, I'm taking a year off. <laughs> so here's our first corner, which is called. Corner. And why is it called Windy Corner? Because coming the other way, as you come around it, you get hit by the southerly wind coming off the sea. Perfect. Uh, no power needed all the way down here. There you go. I um, just want to check because we're on we're on different mics today. So uh, can any everybody hear us clearly? Here's Poppy Corner. Poppies aren't out yet, but they're growing. They are growing. Uh, Holly says, number one fan seen tramway. Fan Henry is watching. He's off school poorly today. Oh dear. Hello, uh, Henry. Get well soon. Uh, hello, Dean. Here we go. Right, we've got 24 of you watching at the moment, which is great. We're just heading on to um, Leeds Bridge. We've got a whistle board here, so there's the ding ding. It's actually a warning board, Josh. I call it a whistle board. Yeah, but this hasn't got a whistle, so it's ah, fine, fair enough. Uh, and this one is called Leeds Bridge. Why is it called Leeds Bridge, Gareth? Because when it's built originally, the RSJs that now support it were made of wood and wood planks. Okay. So they were built to be able to support it. Uh, the Leeds Bridge is the original tram track from the Leeds uh, tramway. Perfect. And here we enter into the lovely East Devon countryside. So on our left here is Sheep's Marsh as we approach Depot Corner and Depot Curve and uh, Riverside Depot. And when we get to the Depot, we're going to have a lovely display of uh, trams up at, uh, up at the Depot there. Look, four of us are going to be there. Thanks for joining us, everybody. If you've got any questions for myself or Gareth, mainly Gareth, then uh, please ask away. Why is it mainly me, John? Well, you probably have more answers than I do. <laughs> so, uh, in the last couple of years, we've had um, speedometers installed on all the trams. So you can start seeing uh, what speed we're doing. So we average between 11 and 13 miles an hour, so pretty much 12 miles an hour. 
max speed uh, signs on all the cop corners and points now. And we go to depot curve and riverside depot where all our trams are stored. So since we last did this, you may notice some changes um, at Riverside. This was basically just a decking. Uh, we have now got picnic benches and interpretation up there. Um, so uh, it is all open now. Last we did this was in 2020, Gareth. And um, we're just going to pass off the, um, the staff and uh, make our way to um, Colleton. Okay, bear with me a minute, folks. Just, oh, just speak to my he's having a chat. There we go. Oh, he's unplugging. Right. So uh, here we've got uh, number 15, which used to be number 17 going up the line, which is what we're going to follow today. Uh, then we've got number 11, which was introduced to the tramway in the early 2000s. That's on our memory tram today. And just past was number 12, which used to be a saloon and is now a double-decker. Hi Dean, uh, we had to close the rail cam chat because uh, of some trolling, uh, it's not very nice people. Um, it's not to say that it will never come back, but at the moment we're leaving it off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, alright, see you later. Oh, <laughs> right in front of the camera. <laughs> uh, we must say thank you to all our sponsors on a lot of our trams, it helps support the tramway. So there we've got Kingfisher in Colleton and Seaton Fish Bar in Seaton. It's a good place for seeing fish, but it's easy. It is, isn't it? It's good for chip shop, actually. Absolutely. Not that we go there very often, mind Josh. <laughs> so, uh, Gareth, could you give us a little bit of information about the um, track bed we're currently travelling on? So, as your, uh, our regular viewers will know, this is the uh, old uh, track bed of the old Seaton branch line, originally opened in 1868. And closed under the uh, acts of. Let me just turn my radio. Down. <laughs> um, and uh, closed under the acts of Dr. Beecher in 1966. So it's on 98 years as a railway. And uh, before the tram moved you from our former home uh, on the front of Eastbourne in um, 1969, first tram ran here August 1970. So, uh, 50. Three years. Yes. Yeah. yeah, 53 years this year. It's also uh, next week, I believe, or might be the week after, actually, is uh, the five-year anniversary of our Seaton Station um, being open. Yes. Which I believe is the 28th of... Uh, no, that was June. No, that was, our, that was our grand opening. Ah, right. Okay. Um, but it actually opened in May. Tides every minute. Oyster catching down here. We'll do a bit of bird watching whilst we're here. We do do bird watching trams throughout the year, so if you do have a fancy of uh, learning a bit more about the birds in the Axe Valley, or if you're more inclined, uh, oh, lots of swans out there today. Then uh, you can book online now at tram.co.uk forward slash events oh, and you'll find ducks bird on the line up ahead. Ducks on the line. Couple of there you go. Uh, Malcolm says, Good afternoon from South Wales. Hello. So uh, we're currently making our way into uh, Axmouth Loop. So uh, the first loop we did was from Seaton to Riverside. And that was a four minute loop, but essentially all the loops now north are going to be three minute loops um, in the service. And uh, this one is called Axmouth Loop because, Gareth? There's the village of Axmouth. Oh yes, it's right opposite Axmouth. Um, fun fact about Axmouth, Gareth, please? When it was the harbour, because the harbour came right up to Axmouth here, it had 14 public houses in. Oh wow. That's a mighty pub crawl. So you're going to see the uh, white light uh, flash just to say that we're on the right line. And then um, into the loop we go. Oh, lovely afternoon, Josh. It's very nice. 
So uh, we're currently going north on number 19. Can you give us some facts about number 19, Gareth? It uh, originally ran on the streets of Exeter, which obviously is about, what, 25 miles away? Yes. Yeah. It's the only surviving operation in Exeter car. Originally it was an open vestibule, in other words, it didn't have any streets. In front or behind us, uh, the stairs would have been going up here into an open top deck. Uh, it runs with us, obviously, as a single deck uh, car now. Absolutely, and it's uh, one of our smallest capacity um, <laughs> trams, so it fits about 20 people uh, in our nice little uh, passenger area there. I think I can see a dinosaur up here. Ooh. There we are, a lovely dinosaur. Why is there a dinosaur there, Josh? Oh, well, that's because we, uh, we're on the Jurassic Coast, um, Gareth, and... We just so happen to also run uh, dinosaur adventure trams throughout the school holidays. We also run uh, other events like the pirate tram, the fairy tale tram, the space tram. Space tram new this year, obviously. Yeah. We also have uh, the new Wetlands Explorer, which is a dementia supportive activity. That's the first one of that one is on um, Tuesday. Today, I mean, that goes every month. We have also a quiet tram next week, which is a sensory friendly uh, event. Just uh, after hours, without all the hustle and bustle of queuing uh, for those that have extra sensory needs. Right, Gareth, uh, we're coming up to a prominent place in the uh, tramway history here. Yeah, this is Had a lot of work this year. Bobsworth Bridge. Yeah, so called. Because in 1970, a trip from the depot to Hewer and back cost a bob. Oh! He's too young to remember the old thing, 5p. Oh. So, uh, also as an addition to our 2020 Driver's Eye Tour is the new Seaton Wetlands uh, Halt, which has this lovely walkway all the way down side of the track, which you can walk into the wetlands area, uh, where the wetlands have four kilometres of uh, walking trails that you can enjoy and uh, it's become one of our more popular stops now I think more popular than Collarford I think uh, yes. lots yeah. of people love to get off at the wetlands and enjoy enjoy the bird life and the wildlife there we go we've got passengers getting picked up here it's also in service now one of our passing places so we pass at um, we pass at Riverside, Wetlands, and Gareth's going to tell me the last one. What, Riverside, mm -hmm. Wetlands, mm -hmm. Collie Ford. There you go. And no, Clinton. no passing points. Oh, passing points. Yeah, that passing point is Colliford. Is it? Yeah, of course it is. Oh, you mean literally pa uh, where you can pass? I mean yeah. as oh, in well, where in the service. Sorry, Carrie Hayne. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, I thought you said just passing points. <laughs> Oh, driver Andy says hi, Josh and Gareth. Hello, Andy. Hi, Andy. Uh, interesting fact about number eight, of course, that's coming towards us now. Yeah. Yes, that was built at Eastbourne. It was. Uh, Eastbourne we used to run on two foot, but that was built at Eastbourne to two foot nine gauge, and it was the first tram that ran here in Seaton in 1970. Um, for the first couple of years of operation, we had no overhead, mm -hmm. uh, so the trams used to travel with the trolley poles tied down and a cable connecting the trolley head down to a little truck behind with the batteries in, so we were pure battery operation. We still are pure battery operation, the light is battery fed. But they're just not with us. Yeah. <laughs> so there's number eight. It does look like John is waving at you, but he's actually giving Gareth some signals. <laughs> and uh, once the line's clear, 15 can move. And uh, what, what happens when you... Uh... Well, everyone give the marketing manager a big smile. I think he's recording us for something like You're live on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook posts. How about that? So as we move away, we're going to give a... What, what, what are we going to give? Do it again. Do it again. There we go. A nice whistle. That's a bell. Don't. Sorry, Abel. I'm just, I'm just testing you. That's what's really happening here. 
So if you've got any questions, if you want to test Gareth's knowledge about the tramway, stick some stick the hardest question in the um, chat you can. And Josh will answer it. <laughs> Over here on the left. Hello Wendy, hello Alfie, hello uh, uh, Malcolm asks, uh, any plans for a webcam at Colleton? Uh, there will be plans for a webcam at Colleton, um, however we have shocking um, internet access at that end uh, and we, so we don't have enough bandwidth to host it at the moment but um, Colleton is moving with the times and is starting to get fibre in the area so hopefully uh, in the next few years we might have a camera at that end uh, we do we might we might have some news about a camera at Seton soon though so watch this space as it were uh, Chris asks has the trams got batteries if there was a power cut well the whole line is battery fed so if we have a national grid failure which all that does is feed our chargers which keep our batteries topped up we should be able running for about a day without uh, mains connection. That's very good, isn't it? In fact, that actually nearly had to happen a couple of weeks ago. Um, National Grid were doing some work in Seton and told us that um, they'd be shutting off the power. And obviously the first thing people ask is, oh, will the tramway still be running or, the, you know, the trams still be running? But, um, yep, no interruption to the trams. Just, uh, just the cafe. <laughs> Tickets. Absolutely, yeah. So you had to uh, book online. Another dinosaur. Another dinosaur indeed. This one's blue. Somebody said to me the other day, you know, when I was trapping on one of the trams, they said, dinosaurs weren't blue. And I said, how do you know? Can you remember them? <laughs> uh, Alfie asks, what's the highest notch you're allowed to use in service? Well, depending on the tram, um, if you've got four series, four parallel, you can go up into notch eight, if needs be. But generally, we always stay in series. This has only got series. We're in notch four now there, but most of the time we like to coast. Well, we coast and we're not using power. We do like to be by the coast. <laughs> well, yes. I think the actual was that by the seaside. Okay. <laughs> so, so, forward. We're watching ahead for the white light to make sure our trolley has come the right wire. It has. So we just creep up behind the uh, tram 15 here. Tram 15, of course, used to be Tram 17, an open toast track uh, represent, representation, that's a big word, isn't it? Big word. Um, of an Isle of uh, Man tram. But it's been enclosed because we needed some more enclosed trams for bad weather. Uh, David asks, uh, great to watch, thank you. Thank you, David. Just wondering what happened to the old yellow ticket office tram I remember from when I was young in the 80s. Was it converted back into a tram? Amazing to see the new station now. Well, it's a bit of a watch this space situation, isn't it? It still exists. Oh, well, yeah. um, it actually went in back into service as a ticket tram in 2017 to 2018 when the old station got knocked down at Seaton. Um, it, it sat outside our Riverside Depot as a ticket um, ticket office again. Um, but now it is back in stores, um, and I think that's as much as we want to say at the moment, isn't it, Gareth? Yes. There we go. I think that's as much as we can say at the moment. Well, you know, I like to tease. <laughs> so, what to our left, Gareth? What's that? This is always a that's great... the old Victorian cast iron gents who rhino. Ah, the yeah. only part of Colleyford Station that's left. In fact, I'll move forward here slightly, and you can uh, have a look at how the station used to look on the poster yard. There you go. There you go, that's the old station and you can see the gents' toilets there, just at the end, so you can get an idea about the layout versus now. Obviously it was a raised platform for the trains, um, you can't really see bits of the raised platform, but um, we are road height now, so uh, we've made it to the 
crossing. What are you going to do now, Gareth? I'm going to operate the crossing now, Josh. Don't run too far. I'm not going too far. <laughs> Wait for the cars to pass. There, there we go. go. Now we're looking ahead and waiting for our white flashing light. We can't proceed till we get that. And it's important to know that when you are a driver and you're waiting, oh. you can see us. So oh, there we go. We've just got a jumper. So they'll be um, reported. But it's it's important to know as a, as a driver, when we're not moving, but you're being stopped, we are waiting for this white light. We're not just sat around. Or even stood around. Or stood around. Depends on the tram. So we just check both things. Make sure the traffic has stopped, which it has. Wave to the drivers. And once we cross the treadle in a minute, you'll hear the wigwag stop. There we go. There we go. So now we're on our uh, Colliford to, I always get this the wrong way around, Thai Lane. Correct. Yes. <laughs> We've now started in long, gentle slope upwards towards Colliford. We have indeed. Now I'm just going to get us through this bit because sometimes we lose signal in this little area. Over one of our many bridges. Bridge. Newt Bridge indeed. And we're going to come up to a, well, an old loop but a new layout. So uh, over the winter uh, some work was done to this, uh, this loop. And so it's got a slightly different uh, layout compared to all the other loops now. So you'll see we do go straight in but we do sort of kink out into the points and then back onto the main line. So effectively you've got a set of right hand points here and a set of right points the other end. Yeah. Uh, Martin check asks, trolley, I will check the trolley. So we're going to just check the trolleys on the right line and it is indeed. Uh, Martin asks, what sort of requirements and training would need to, fulfill to, uh, to be fulfilled to get involved with volunteering as a driver at the tramway? So what does it take to be a driver at the tramway, Gareth? Uh, you need to hold a UK driving licence. Yeah. We then invite people to come in for a day where we assess whether, whether we think they'll be suitable and it gives them a go behind the controls because you'll be surprised at the number of people who come to do it and then they decide it's not for them and that's fine. Then you'll be required to um, have a full medical examination by our doctor. Um, and then we ask you to come for a two-week intensive training course, where at the end of it you will uh, have a practical test, and you will also have a written test on the rule book. Uh, then all we ask of you as a volunteer is you give us at least 21 days service per year or per operating season. Absolutely, so perfect. And um, when is uh, the new um, driver induction or uh, advertisements going to be out this year, do you reckon? Uh, okay, well, we usually induct new drivers January, February of the year, but this year we didn't have possession of the line because new, uh, not new bridge, Bobsworth Bridge was being rebuilt. Uh, so we got, a, and because of COVID, we've got a little bit of a backlog. But what I would say is if you're interested in becoming a driver here, send me uh, an email saying that and I'll send you the relevant information and an application form. But I would say hopefully next January, February we'll be training quite a few, um, but some of them may go to later in the year. Yeah, so we do have a place on our website um, for uh, volunteering uh, and gen general volunteering jobs around the tramway, driving be one of them. and. Um, Usually around the end of the year, around October, November, we'll end up opening that for applications, um, to which then Gareth will invite them in for a January, February, March um, induction and training. And it takes approximately two weeks, so it's um, a bank of five days each. Uh, someone asked if nine was out today. Yes, there it is. Right. 
So this is Cowanhain Loop. It is. Do you know why it's called Cowanhain Loop, Josh? Next to Cowanhain uh, Lane. Cowanhain Park, yeah. yeah. Old Southern Region signal there. Just where? Where did I look? Oh, there it is. Signal post. We're going to renovate our signals as time and uh, money allow. Final climb up into Colleton itself, but Colleton Station, because Colleton itself is over there. There you go. So that's the lovely uh, town of Colleton. It is a town, not a village. The most rebellious town in England. It is indeed. Oh, I thought it was Monmouth Rebellion. Oh, Devon. there you go. Yes, Devon. Yeah. Oh, there we've you got go. Track up here. There you got Guy, our uh, newest track engineer. Just working on the line. To me that he's us and he's moved to a position of safety. There you go. What we need to do now is to go slow across him. Uh, Daniel asks, is Tramathon coming back? Uh, Tramathon will be coming back, just not this year. We're still recovering from the last one. Uh, Richard's asked, any chance of the chat returning to the YouTube channel? At the moment, no. Um, it's not to say it will be gone forever, um, but at the moment we have no um, plans to turn it back on. Um, we have, were in agreement with Rail uh, Railcam that it needed to be turned off. Uh, we were getting too many trolls and um, complaints from users, from other users, so uh, it was easier just to turn it off for now. Uh, we might turn it back on in the future. And unfortunately, you always get the people who just want to be nasty to other people. Absolutely. So, uh, I think since our last entrance to Colleton, this, this uh, entrance has changed the other way around, hasn't it? The loop used to be curve out. Used to come out of the southbound out and then back over, didn't you? No. Yeah? No. Yeah. No, that's always been the outrage. No, I mean, as in, like, the actual layout of the, the point is now changed. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you check my trolley for me? I can and do change. Check your trolley. So yeah, you used to. This used to have a curve, uh, so you used to go out like that and then back out. But um, that's since changed. We've also got uh, an accessible ramp at the other end. That's where we now queue. And here we are at Colleton Station. Lovely, lovely day for it. Cheers, isn't it? In the there's uh, Colleton Church. It's the 13th century church with a 15th century spire. It's one of the only octagonal um, spires in the country, I think. Now, what are we going to do? Are we going to stop short and turn? Um, or are we going to go in? We, we, we'll go in. We're, We're going to go in. Um, and we can do the reverser. Perfect. I can unplug and you can fill the reverser if oh. people would like to see the reverser oh. operation. Well, that might be nice. So whilst we wait for 15 to turn, um, any facts you can share about Colleton Station? And it was built in 1868. Oh. As a lot of branch line stations, it's built about ooh, half a mile outside of the actual town. Um, mainly because, as I'm sure most of you are aware, we need to try to keep uh, railways, tramways as flat as possible. Metal to metal doesn't go so well up a steep gradient, or indeed down a steep gradient. Well, it goes very well down a steep <laughs> gradient, but it's stopping at the bottom is the problem. Um, the old running inboard there, Colleton, that's a board that our carpenter made. Um, the original enamel board is actually in the shop up on the wall. It had uh, a passing loop here, and over on the left, right of me, where our little siding is, there were sidings into um, the good shed, which is down the bottom, still there. Doesn't look more like a good shed anymore. And uh, there used to uh, parcels, deliveries, and the milk churn. You... There we go. Right, Just so. For this tram to move down. Jilly says we'll be back on the tram again next week. Fantastic, Jilly. Good to see you. So, Robert Driving 15 is going to. Turn around now. Oh, you can actually. You I'll can... watch him go through. Yeah. So 
a lovely piece of engineering at this end to save uh, having to change the trolley ourselves. No, everyone's done it. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's an interactive display in the milk chair now. There is indeed. And a short uh, film you can watch. Here he goes. So you'll see the magic happen. Currently he's pushing his trolley forward. Guides itself through. And there it goes and now he's turned around. Magic. I think that catchphrase could be used by uh, old Danny before, isn't it? <laughs> so we're going to stub end. Obviously, this is where the trains would continue over the bridge and up towards Seen Junction, uh, which then would connect to uh, Exeter and Waterloo. Right. So what change, are you going to do now? Change over there. Yeah. So our tail light, hmm, can you see it in there? Yeah. It's white there, but obviously it's red through the lens. Yeah. And our headlight will now be facing forward. Mm -hmm. I'll gently let this break off because we are on the flat and we're going straight through the tram to the other end. So we're not leaving the tram. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we, we are attached. And now we're at the south end, which is almost identical to the north end. Oh, fancy. So now we go through the reverse, and I'll get Josh to check trolley and things. Okay. Yeah, all good. Good. Now we're going to go dead slow through the reverse, and obviously we are pushing the trolley. The trolleys are meant to be trailed. Stop and proceed board here, so we need to stop at the board. And away we go. Uh, are there a difference between the dings or the whistles as we stop and start? Uh, two dings to say you're about to go, and one ding to say you're stopping. And a succession of rapid dings is an emergency. Uh -huh. Stop. <laughs> It'd be so, nice uh, a couple of fruit scones and a couple yeah, of Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Although, um, plain scone for me, please. <laughs> no, it's not fruit, it's definitely fruit. Fruit for Gareth, plain for me, please. Now, Devon way with the green and jam or the Cornish way? Oh, the you mean the wrong way? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, I was being taxed. Oh, me. okay, sorry, I appreciate that. So, yeah, on the left we have the old Silings building. rail would have gone straight through that car park. There's our loading activities manager. We can go into the interviewer. <laughs> I'm sure she'll appreciate that during the lunch. Yes. <laughs> so if you've got any questions for Gareth, or me, but mainly Gareth. Josh, I don't know why you're so afraid of answering questions. I'm afraid of getting it wrong. <laughs> Let's jump off and you can pan up the side of the tram. This beautiful tram. Now this is a heavy old tram and uh, some of our drivers aren't overly keen on driving it. But I find it a really nice tram to drive. It's a very pretty tram as well, isn't it? It is, and it's great for filming in because it's got a big cab. And can you uh, tell us anything about some certain filming that we've been doing? No. Oh, okay. Actually, could you? Actually, <laughs> Um, next Friday. Next Friday, the 19th. Channel 5. Yeah. Susan Kalman's 
grand days out. Correct. Features fossils along the coast. Yeah. And then she came and visited me with Tram 19 and I taught her how to drive. You did so indeed. We'll be on Channel 5 next Friday, 8 o'clock. All being well. Well, that's what they plan to do. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be nice. Um, yeah, catch us on the telly. We or haven't seen on uh, My yet. Five. Your Five? Yes, My Five. Okay. Dot com. Um, the series starts uh, tonight, but we are on episode two. two. Uh, Carl asks, how many years has Gareth been driving at Seaton? I've been involved in tramway originally for the first 12, 13 years as a volunteer when I lived in Cardiff. Um, started in 2000, so two, 23 years. 23 years? 23 years, a long time. Yeah. I've been here since 2017, although involved since 2015. Relatively new. So that's still eight years involved, though. So you would have been here 15 years by that point. Yeah. My goodness. My word. And what's your favourite tram? Number seven. Number seven. Where's that? In the shed. Oh. What's happening with that? Major rebuild. Yeah. So it's um. It's had some new trucks and. Money, money is always a constraint, obviously, being a charity. Um, and things are cheap. Absolutely. So if you want to um, donate, you can do via our ticket page. Um, all the stuff, if you go onto our um, front of our homepage on our website, tram.co.uk, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a big button that says donate. And you can donate as little as one pound, Gareth. Did you know that? And if you gift aid it, oh, at no extra cost. You. If you're a UK taxpayer, if you tick the box for gift aid it, so if you donated one pound, we'd claim twenty-five p. Fantastic. So your right? your donation would be worth one well, pound twenty-five. If you donated a hundred pounds, If you donated a thousand pounds, thousand two hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> thank, thank goodness. You know, actually that's not right. This is. This is. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna confusing me now. <laughs> oh, I see. Fair enough. Which is why it became an electrical engineer. <laughs> yeah, you don't need any maths for that. You know, when you start work in the real world, that you realise why they used to teach you what X, Y, and Z was. Because during algebra, and that, I used to think, why do I want to know what Z is? <laughs> so at the moment, I can Z? hear uh, 15 making a funny noise. What is it? That's the compressor come in because 15 has got air brakes. Oh. Uh, and then a whistle. Um, so the compressor is detect de detected that the pressure in the tank has dropped slightly, so it's topping it up. Oh, very good. Um, 19 hasn't got any aim. It's purely electrical and mechanical. Very nice. And it's one of the shortest wheel bases, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, well, you can pair it there. Yeah. Here's Robert coming across from the chat. He's going to ask me what we're doing, actually. <laughs> oh, sorry, Robert, you be on Facebook Live, say hello everybody. Robert, what's your favourite tram? Oh, uh, 14. 14. It's not out today. Uh, let's go back to um, Riverside and then we can do a mini, mini tour. Uh, Carl asks, do any of your trams have disabled access? They do. Uh, 9, 10, 11, number 9 we passed earlier, has um, low floor trams. In fact, on the way back down, we'll probably pass number uh, 11, Correct. Uh, the pink tram, and that has accessible uh, and disabled access. We definitely will. Oh, there you go. As long as it's departed. Yes. <laughs> and that's doing the memory tram today. And they're doing a coronation special theme. There you, you go. See when 11 goes past us, it's got union flags all over it. Absolutely. Please note union flag. Is the union flag not union jack? Union jack when it's at sea. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Andrea says, uh, I donated a while ago. Thank you very much, Andrea. Oh, thank you. So if you've got any questions, shove them in the chat. We will endeavour to ask as much as we can. Uh, just at the start of the station there, Gareth, is a, is a hut. That's the old lying side hut for the original railway road. In there is uh, our set of space battery chargers. And you see the black boxes just in front of it. That's the lead acid battery. Oh. We run on 120 volts 
DC. And each one of the uh, battery cells in there is 1.2 volts. So you can work out how many battery cells there are. Joshua's mind is going on. I'm not going to tell him yet. So he's going to have to work out. I assume 100. No. 10. <laughs> work it out. 1,000? <laughs> I, tell you what, folks, I didn't hear. I didn't What's hear the. Um... And tell Josh the answer. One point two volts per cell. Yeah. And we need one hundred and twenty volts. So and now we're going to get back on the tram. No, so it's still. Oh, you've confused me now. I'm doubting my own maths. Oh, I thought you meant how many. Anyway, so we're going to go back Obviously south now to um, <laughs> uh, Matthew Streeton says, afternoon chaps. Um, afternoon, Matt. Matt, tell Josh how many 1.2 volt cells it takes to make 120 volts. 100? No? I'm... Oh well. Uh, to your left is a light, what is it? There's more? In, in the cab. Above the oh, GPS. Line side light. That tell, shows us that we're connected to the overhead. No, nah, and if it goes off. We're not connected to the overhead. Ah, stop the I see, as we can. I see. Fair enough. One of our green roofs. Very nice. So, we don't have to do much. Um, with the acceleration going down. Once we get to a nice speed, pretty much just controlling it with the brake. Correct. And the Which, uh, thing when you're driving a tram, always have to hand on the brake and on the controller. Ah. So yeah, it's good on electricity when you're going south. Yes. There are, mine is just these replacing sleepers. You can see all the sleepers he's replaced already today, where he's dug out either side. There you go. I don't think he's replaced them, I think he's digging out plenty of Getting them ready. Them. Obviously they're not going to pull sleepers out while trams are running on them. Ah. So we're coming up to another bridge up here, it's uh, Kerr's Lake Bridge. This is an important, um, important milestone on our Polar Express trams at Christmas. It's very you know important. What? I wondered how long it was going to be before you mentioned Polar Express. I did an entire <laughs> single trip. Uh, Carl asks, what is the minimum age to become a driver? 18. 18. And you do have to have a uh, driver's license, yeah. a, a road, road car driver's license. So we're coming up to number 12. And uh, how old is number 12? Uh, number 12 started life as a school of leopard at Eastbourne. He's undergone three major reconfigurations. Oh, we've got two trams here. Oh, this is going to be special. Always love this, uh, oh, this loop when there's... Uh, Two trams. And this is driver Mike. Mike is uh, a driver and an instructor now. Yeah. Mike is the encyclopedia of tramways of the world and railways of the world. Should we try and get his most exciting fact? Could do. Ask him what is. Thank you. Mike. Mike. Come and we're, speak to the people on we're, Facebook. We're live on Facebook. What is your uh, fanciest fact about the tramway? Fanciest fact. Or, or, you know, funnest fact. Funniest fact. Uh, well, the funniest one I've ever known was in the very early days of the Seaton Tramway. Uh, one of the volunteers who used to work on the tramway uh, kept uh, stayed in the uh, substation before the substation was <laughs> in place at Axmouth. And he took his uh, mattress on the tram on number eight, <laughs> folded it up. So that's the funniest one. <laughs> That was good, that's a good fact. <laughs> There's a lot of people who've um, slept in various places of the tramway over the, 
early years. Yes. Um, in fact, when we get back down to the depot, we can probably point to one area up, up, up on the uh, upper area. Volunteers, uh, Jeff, got his last name now. He's no longer with us. Um, and his caravan at Polyford. Yeah. On the green bit, not mm -hmm. in the caravan park. Just need to give um, the driver a 11, a 16, sorry. So, uh, what do the two signals that you just gave and received mean? Well, the cut means I've got no tram following me. Um, I see we signal again. Oh, and the wave was acknowledging his uh, cutthroat that he's got nobody behind him. That's very good. Yeah. Very nice afternoon. No rain forecast for nearly a week now, apparently. Lovely. So we've still got a hose pipe ban. <laughs> Not that we need water, thank goodness. So any questions, throw them in the chat, we'll answer them, well we'll at least try, can't promise they'll be uh... <laughs> of you that saw the April Fool's Day will might recognise a little bit of that angle there. That is where my zip line photo was taken. Uh, there were a lot of complaints about that, Josh. <laughs> a lot of disappointment. They wanted to Yeah, I know. We, have, we actually had quite a few people. Where we had one person call the office and ask for more information. So you never know. If, if the trams all uh, fall apart one day, we've got an extra... Um, We've got an extra... Yeah, trams will never fall No, apart, exactly, gosh. but if they suddenly did... Uh, Andrew asks, how old is Tram 19? I think it's our second oldest tram, isn't it? Yeah, um, yes, 1926? No, no it's... Sorry. It's, um... It's, um, older than that. Because 1904 is... 1906, I meant. I there we go, right. I was going to say, because 1906... Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so if you caught our um, January newsletter, you recognise this photo here with um, when the works were happening. So I notice we don't have to get out and change any points when we get to points. Why is that? Points are sprung for the direction that we need to travel in. Ah. Check my trolley for me, please. Sir. I can check your trolley. And it's checked. All Thank good. You. Thank you. Uh, Carlos, have you ever visited any of the trams from the likes of Kreutz? Oh, do you ever have any visiting trams from the likes of Kreutz, Tramway or Blackpool? Unfortunately, that's extremely difficult because we're on a unique gauge of two foot nine here, and there isn't another two foot gauge uh, tramway or railway, in fact, as far as I know in the world. So, no, we don't yes. have uh, visiting trams, unfortunately, and we don't visit other tramways. Um, so, no. No. Uh, Carol says greetings from Los Angeles. Oh. Very nice. Hello. Gosh, what time is it in Los Angeles? It's going to be earlier, isn't it? So, morning. Just looking for any other questions, if we have any. Apologies if we go for a blackout here. We usually uh, 
lose a little bit of signal here. Um, but uh, you can find us on the our Seaton Tramway YouTube channel, where we are live on Colliford uh, Riverside. Uh, sorry, Riverside Colliford Rail Cam. So we've got a 24-hour day rail cam. So we'll, we'll try and give it a wave, Gareth, when we go go through. Carol says it's six o'clock. So we come up to our red light and our stop board. And uh, Gareth's gonna go and do his, uh, do his thing. Well, I'm attached. Yeah, to me. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's two. Waiting for the white flashing light. There we go. There it goes. It's an important sign there. So we'll make it into, uh, oh, here is our new um, Isle of Thanet um, shelter, which was installed last year. It's not new, Josh. Well, it's, it's new to old. us, but it is very old. It was res lovingly restored in our depot over the last few years. So we're going to make our way to Riverside and then what we'll do is we'll do a little five minute depot tour and then we'll say goodbye. So if you've got any questions, we've got about half an hour left of the uh, of our uh, live stream today. Thank you to Gareth for driving us today. It's actually nine minutes left to Riverside. Right, but then we're going to do a depot tour. Oh, right. <laughs> this is the Collie Bridge going over the Collie River. So, what type of um, what type of trains used to uh, go between Seaton Junction and? Um, Seaton Station in the old days. Was it steam? Was it diesel? Steam, what was it? Steam up until the early 60s and the last couple of years literally saw these multiple units. So we've uh, made it back down into the Axe Valley. Seaton Wetlands on our right. Colliford Common. On our left is the uh, Axe River and Marshes. This was quite a picture last week with the floods. Yes. And of course next year it will have been uh, 10 years since the Valentine's Day um, flooding. Valentine's Day storms. Do you remember those Gareth? Can you tell us any stories about the Valentine's Day storm? I can tell you that of the rails all along here and we did bring the water tram up in that and it actually looked like the tram was just travelling along the top of the water. Oh. Of course we had to suspend the service because in the end we lost a lot of track mm. or ballast I should say down uh, by uh, Tower Hyde. Tower Hyde? Is that Tower Hyde? Yeah. yeah. In fact, we lost more ballast than they did on the front of Dawlish. In fact, we made it onto BBC One National News. We did indeed. For the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we also uh, we also got it all back on track. Um, pardon, oh, the, pa pardon the pun. 
it within, was it three weeks? A bit longer than that. For the memory tram. Give me your royal wave. Facebook. So if you tune into our Facebook site, you can see us. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Robert. There we go. So, uh, was that a dinosaur cutout? Not a cutout. It's a full-on uh, statue. What do you call it? Model? Model, thank you. There was some swans out here earlier. They've moved on. Hi. So yeah, that's our new uh, wetlands hole. If you get an Explorer ticket, you can get it off on any of our stops, any of our uh, trams all day long, as many times as you can. Get back on them as well, Josh. You can get back on them, that's the helpful bit. And you can visit all our new interpretation. Uh, if you bring the family, if you've got the kids, uh, all kids' tickets get our new um, Gilbert Explorer Trail. You can go and find all the um, all the cutouts at the different stops and uh, complete the trail for a success certificate, and that comes free with your Explorer tickets. Back over Bobsworth. It's had about six weeks worth of work do done to it over the winter, so we had to completely close off the track. And the lovely Black Hole Marsh, which, uh, if you see it from the top, it's almost like a clock. So when you go and visit the uh, the hide at the centre. The idea is that all the long bits are uh, are away from the um, away from the hide, so that the uh, the birds don't hide from you. A lot of you hide there. Absolutely. Is this the one that the mattress went in? Yeah. <laughs> and then this was where the washout was in 2014. Yes. So that you can see the uh, new ballast in there. The avian cages now. That's the one. So above you, there's a little, um, a little meter. What is it? A meter. Yeah. I'm sure, it's not current the drawing. So when you put a little power in, it'll go up. But I'm not going to. <laughs> you picked the wrong moment, Josh. I apologise. <laughs> There's the town of Seaton. Stretching along the hill. A lovely backdrop to the wetlands. There's usually a few herons down in this little bit. They're fishing elsewhere today. The magpie. Oh, Josh, if you want to look Oh, yeah. There you go. So he's put power in at the controller. Each notch goes Back up. Off. There's more power as he comes off. Back off. There you go. You make it look easy, Gareth. No deer today. Oh dear. Deer. There's usually three uh, There's deer an eagle. over in the field. In yeah. the early morning and then later evening or afternoon. Uh, 
Uh, those of you visiting us in the summer, the Natural Seaton Festival is on the 21st, 22nd and 23rd of July. There's going to be activities all around outside our Seaton station in Cherry Harcourt, the amphitheatre, Tesco stalls. Plaza, lots of stalls, food, eatery, entertainment, live music, live music circus skills, alpacas, puppeteers. Apparently Josh is doing a tightrope act. Or is he? <laughs> Oh, I see. No Am I doing that on top of the um, overhead? Yeah. <laughs> we got some sheep. And this is the Seaton, uh, Seaton Marshes Hide. You can access that via the Wetlands Halt. So, fun fact about this uh, bank that we're on, which makes the bed of the of the track, is you can see exactly where it was taken from. You can see that channel uh, down the side of this bank here it wasn't there. The actual river, that was there. And they dug all of that out and plonked it right here. Some say that the track bed is also built on a line from below. Oh, interesting. I don't know whether that's true or not. Some uh, ruby reds. Then we my dinner later in the year. <laughs> That'll upset the vegetarians. <laughs> some bunny rabbits. There used to be thousands of bunny rabbits, but since 2014, obviously the floods flooded all the hides. Unfortunately, probably uh, died, and they've just not recovered that yet. So you can see number. Oh, well, I can't now. So you'll see. You see number nine coming up the uh, up from Leeds Bridge down there, which will meet us here at um, Riverside, and then we will. Uh, will we take nineteen over? No, we'll leave it. We'll leave it here. I'll get a date to do that. And then we'll go and do a little mini uh, depot tour before we say goodbye. So if you've got any questions as we come to the last five to ten minutes, throw them in the chat. We'll try our best to uh, give you a correct answer. You can find us at tram.co.uk. We operate between March and the end of October before we do our Christmas event, Polar Express. And then we reopen in the winter from the 27th of December to uh, the 1st of January this year. Just with the way the calendar lies. Yeah, you've got tram driving lessons and driver's eye experiences. What's the average speed of the trams? 12 uh, miles an hour. Oh! We're just waiting for the tram to go and then we walk in. Never wise to walk in front of a moving tram. Ah. Or any moving vehicle, to be honest. So uh, to the left of Gareth is the uh, Riverside Halt which was uh, new and opened last year with Wetlands Hole. It's got some new interpretation. Some picnic benches, you can enjoy your lunch out here on the river and watch the trams and the day go past. So we're just gonna walk our way into the depot and we'll see what trams are in there today. 
and uh, test Gareth's knowledge. Time for my tea break now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the fan. Yeah, rather looks rather complicated. <laughs> How long did it take you to get used to it? Not long. How in my early days drivers used to bring the tracks back into the depot when you produce your as well. Um two works car. And we don't have to have passengers upstairs. No. Number four. Number four. Number 14, our oldest tram in the fleet, 1901. London Metropolitan Electric Tramways tram. And I thought it was 1904. Open vestibule, open top, double deck tram. Is it not 1904? What, whatever you say, Josh. <laughs> you said 1901. Did I? I think so. Oh, yeah, it's the sun getting to me. <laughs> this was a four foot eight and a half standard gauge tram. We run two foot nine. It's had a, this door, the easiest way to demonstrate it, is one of the doors. It had a pair of doors, so it's been narrowed down by about two foot. And it used to essentially look like number two. Yes. But as a, sta as a standard, standard gauge size. size yeah. Number seven, my favourite car, which is undergoing renovation. Oh, and number ten, which is, uh, it's just had a set of, new set of wheels and axles, obviously. Um, and it's had a new braking system fitted. This end is finished. This end, the truck is still out, so you can actually see the truck here. It's missing its, its, its centre bearer that connects to the tram. But as you can see, nice shiny new wheels. Um, and this tram has four traction motors. Very Two, nice. One on each axle, basically. Got a slide straight under. Yep. Doesn't take too long to get them out. Good <laughs> workshop. Yeah, saws, big saws. Normal things. Most of our woodwork here. Then we've got the metal workshop on the right, which is you know things like lathes, milling machines, grinders, big hammers, small hammers. Devices, small hammers. We don't use small hammers that much. Then you've got a flatbed truck here, which is a fairly new build. Yeah. Built here by us. Has it been given a number yet? No. Oh. Tamping machine. This what does that do? Saves the uh, trackman. You saw Guy out there earlier. It saves them having to use a bar and a shovel and um, pack the ballast. This actually packs the ballast for them, so it oh. makes packing the ballast a lot easier. Eddie asks, uh, where is Dingle? Well, Dingle has just walked down, and here he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Dingle, one of my inspectors, who I've just delegated as the, um, we were talking about the level crossing earlier, the level crossing film retrieval and send off to the police for prosecution person. That needs a snappier acronym. <laughs> we'll think of one. In fact, they're really, yeah. Okay. Full submission. Very nice. Well, you'll have a fifth one because we got a two jumpers on when we yeah. were out on this line. Okay, the bucket wagon. Again, if we're not doing overhead or we need to reach out to the edges of poles and that, the bucket wagon does that for us. It's a one-man bucket wagon, obviously only one person at a time. Uh, that's tested regularly, like all our lifting equipment and everything undergoes thorough testing by an independent company. Um, here's the seat and branch line, a brief history. I'm not sure how well you'll see that on video. With the reflections. Um, here's where I was talking about there used to be a, a yard at Colleton. There's the points out. We were, we, we were stopped here waiting to go into Stub End there. The milk journey is almost visible behind there, which we've seen. This is Colleton Railway Station, 1930s period, before it was rebuilt um, into this station. You mean Seaton then? 
Seaton. What did I say? Golaton. Oh, well. <laughs> yes, definitely Seaton Station. Um, Seaton Junction on the main Waterloo to Exeter line. With the building which is still there. Which is still there, looking very much similar. Cars are a little bit more modern now. <laughs> the old level crossing that we've been across twice now. Um, unfortunately, when we moved here, they didn't think to keep the gates or anything. Um, so they've gone and we don't really need them. Seat Junction signal box, which used to be up the line from the station. Some drivers, and there we go. 98 years, the last round trip, 1818, Saturday, 5th of March, 1966, and it cost two shillings and eight pence, which is what, uh, 10, 12 pence, hmm? 12, 12p in new money. And that's about it. <laughs> Best picture of the new Seaton Station. Oh, there we the go. The newest Seaton Station. Colour one, look, with mm. a decent old put you oh. in. So if you've not got any questions, thank you for joining us all today um, for our lovely return trip from Seaton to Colleton and back to Riverside. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you want to visit us, we're open every day, 10 till uh, 6, technically, but the last tram's at 5 o'clock. Yep. Uh, tram's every 20 minutes. And you can find us at tram.co.uk. Anything left to say, Gareth? No, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us as Don't well. Don't forget Friday night, 8 o'clock. Yes, next Don't Friday. Know what it'll be like, <laughs> if we actually haven't seen it ourselves. We're on Channel 5 next Friday at 8pm on Susan Kalman's Grand Day Out. Um, they came uh, not that long ago, actually, no, a couple no, of months no, ago. No, so no, it's yeah, been a quick yeah, turnaround. Yeah, and luckily it was a dry day. It was a dry day. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Just dingles behind Josh pulling faces. Oh dear. Right. Okay. Thank nice you very much. You again and see you soon. Give me a nice big wave. Bye.